circular motion. That's one application of what we're dealing with with circular motion. There's many other applications and we'll do a couple of them today. One of the most interesting to me is uh, racetrack design. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and look at this. So first of all we'll do the simplest possible case. Let's imagine that you have a circular racetrack. And if it wasn't a circular racetrack, you know, you look at you can look at just the like the circle parts of the oval or the circle parts of the, <laughs> the circular curves on turns and stuff. Say I have some sort of racetrack with a radius r, and you have a car going around this racetrack. Okay. So is that radius going all the way to the outer edge, or, or is it just going to where you drew it? It's to? going to where the car is. Okay. Okay. So if you have a wide race track, you know, depending on where the car was, we get different types of circular motion. Okay. I'm going to say that the velocity of this car is v, and the speed of it is v rather. The velocity is constantly changing <coughs> in turns, but the speed is the same. Um, and uh, if I draw a free body diagram of the car, <coughs> if I draw a little diagram where I look at the car from behind, <coughs> so V is going into the board. By the way, there's a little physics notation for observer. Um, <coughs> so this is a notation to say observer is here. And you can think of it as an eyeball with some eyelashes here, okay? That's just the notation. <coughs> and so according to this observer, looking at the, at, at the race car, you know, they'd see a car going away from them like that. <coughs> so these into the board here. And uh, let's see what the free body diagram for that car would be. What forces would be on that car? Force of gravity. Yeah, yeah, force of, well, assuming that there's no, like, fancy oh. things like spoilers and whatnot, we have, we'll deal with a force of gravity, weight, or mg. Okay. <coughs> what other forces? Normal force. have a normal force going upwards. Good. Is there friction? Yeah, and there's a, there has to be a frictional force, right? Mm -hmm. So, if there were no force on this car, the car would move in a straight line, right? Yeah. So which direction would this, the frictional force have to be if it's to move in the a circle? Direction. Up into the what? Opposing to the range. left? Wait, wait, wait. That way? <laughs> yes. That way? Yeah. To make yeah. a curve? Yeah, very good. So you have to have a frictional force going this way. Okay. And that's it. Right. Now, we can introduce maybe, um, I'm going to introduce sort of a backwards coordinate system just for a minute. I'm going to say that x goes this way and y goes up, okay? 
Just it, it just for ease. We have the friction and the direction of the X. You don't have to do it. You can pick it X this way and that would work out just fine and be just as easy really almost. <coughs> So what are the sum of the forces in the y direction? And B and so in the positive direction is normal force. Okay, normal force. Minus mg. Minus mg. And if that thing's staying on the track and not accelerating up and down, what would be the sum <coughs> of those forces? Zero. That'd be m. A y, which is zero, if it's, you know, if it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. How about some of forces in the x direction? <coughs> we have friction, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. that has to. What does it have to equal? That has to equal m a x, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's the condition for circular motion on this acceleration? Yeah, that's a centripetal acceleration, right? It has to be accelerating towards the center of the circle. Now, as I have it drawn here, the x direction is this towards the center of the circle, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what, <coughs> what's the magnitude of that acceleration? V squared over R. That's right. So this AX is V squared over R. And uh, this turns out to be what the friction force has to be. M V squared over R. Okay. Now, this friction force, it's related to um, well, there's a maximum friction force if it's not skidding. That's uh, the static friction, right? And if it is skidding, the friction force will always be kinetic because it'll be sliding. So there's two possibilities here. Skidding. And the friction force is kinetic friction times the magnitude of the normal <laughs> force. And uh, from here we figured out what that is, right? That would be mu k m g. If it's not skidding, the friction force can be take a range from zero up to a maximum value, where f max is the coefficient of static friction times the normal force m g. Okay, that's the maximum possible friction force, it could be anywhere from zero to this value if it's not skidding. All right, so I'm going to give you a little, a little problem, see if you can do this. Okay, so let's say we have a race car, race cars have fairly sticky tires. Um, so let's have mu s equals 1.1 fairly sticky tires, mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.9. Okay. Let's say uh, what, um, oh, so yeah, what is the maximum speed a race car can go around a r equals 20 meter circle. Question mark. <coughs> so go ahead and see if you can combine all of this stuff and uh, see if you can put that in there. Okay? Feel free to work with the person next to you, discuss this.
Do we, we have, have that weight of the car? Oh. <clears throat> I didn't um, give that, did okay. I? Try writing it out with the M's and see what happens. Yeah. 
possible V, that would mean that this F is at a max, right? Mm -hmm. If the M and the R stay the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. V is the speed. And the, so if I want to solve for V, I'm going to the maximum V. What I would do is I'm going to just take F max equal to m v max squared over r multiplied by r over m like this and then take the square root right so square root of r f max over m is equal to z max. This is an r. Okay, now this maximum friction force. The maximum friction force, well, if it was kinetic friction, you know, plug in mu k mg, but that mu k is a little bit less than the, the static friction coefficient. So the maximum friction force will be this one when it's not skidding, right? And so that's what I'll plug in here for the F max. So square root of R, F max is mu S M G over M is V max. The M's cancel out, see? So that would be square root of R mu S G. I can plug in numbers now. So that would be 20 meters, 1.1, 9.8 meters per second squared. <coughs> and what do you get? 14.7. Yeah. 14.7. 14.7 meters per second. Make sense? <laughs> All right. What if you broke him to a skid? <coughs> and uh, how fast could you be going then? 13.2. Yeah. Yep. If you broke him to a skid, it would change from the static friction to the kinetic friction. In which case, I would put in UF, leave the UK being 0.9 here. And we would lower the speed. Okay? So it doesn't help to be skidding around the track necessarily. 
Mm -hmm. Now here's something interesting. If you're on a real racetrack, you know, a lot of the, that coping that coefficient of friction depends a lot on your, the heat in your tires. If you start skidding, you rapidly increase the heat in your tires. So sometimes you can maybe actually go faster that way. So it's, it's, it, there's, more subtle, there, there's more subtle points in the real world. And then here's something that's crazy, drag racing. They go, they get 5G acceleration, which seems like it would mean that you'd have a meter <coughs> being 5, which is way beyond anything physical. I still don't know how they do that. Wait, have a what? A five, an acceleration in drag racing of 5 V. Because they go from, in like 5 seconds, or have, you know the top field drag racers? Anyone ever watch those? They get up to like 340 miles an hour in a quarter mile. Right? Or half a mile or whatever. <laughs> and it's in like four four or five seconds. So and that that, that corresponds to uh, an acceleration of like uh, forty something meters per second squared. Now, I don't know how they do that on tires, it just baffles the mind, but the tires are extremely thin and kind of flex fun. And that has a lot to do with it. So but I haven't really figured that part out. <laughs> I probably be willing to get extra credit for somebody who wanted to explain that to me. <laughs> well, they still have top fuel draggers. You know, oh, I probably shouldn't get off topic. But those top fuel drag racers, the very long ones, like that, they are the, I mean they're fascinating machines. They don't have a they don't have a, a gear shift or transmission. You know, normal transmission. What they have is they have seven clutch plates that progressively freeze together as it speeds up and then they have to rebuild the clutch after every race. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, it's uh, it's actually, I mean that's just what they do. <laughs> So it's um, and it's and it, that way they they can tune when it's going to freeze because you don't have enough time to shift. So it's pretty neat. It's very awesome. All right, let's go ahead and look at another application. So I'm sure everyone, or maybe not everyone, say you're going over a hill a little bit too fast on your car or bike. What happens? No you go airbound, right? Let's see if we can figure out why, and let's see if we can figure out the speed at which you can go over a hill without going airbound, or at what speed you will go airbound. This is another application of circular motion. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Imagine I have a car, and imagine I have a hill. Okay? Maybe that's too circular, it's, but I'll, I'm going to show you a better hill. Let's see, like this, okay? A little bit less clearly circular. Let's say I have a car going with a speed V and it's going over the hill. So I'm going to draw it at the point also when it's on the hill. Moving with a speed V. All right. Now, why would this be circular motion? Well, if I were to draw a little circle that just touches the top of this hill, so that the, the, the hill is, you know, the, the, the hill is the top of this circle. And you can see that in order for this thing to be remaining on the hill, for this period of time, this thing's undergoing circular motion. You see that? Mm -hmm. All right, and that, so I'm going to call this radius of, of the hill R. That's, uh, in, a, in a problem, that would be like radius of curvature of the hill. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what V has to be before um, <coughs> it falls off the hill. Now, here's a condition for it to remain on the hill. When the magnitude of the normal force is greater than zero, it's still on the hill. It's still pressing down on the hill. Okay. 
when magnitude of the normal force is equal to zero, it's just coming off the hill. So this will be the condition that we'll be using when it's flying off, when it's going off hill. Okay. <coughs> so this will be the condition we'll be using to discover when it's going to go off the hill. Let's draw a free body diagram on this. When it's up at the top here, what are the uh, what, what are the forces? Uh, yeah, then keep going downwards. Good. Normal force. Normal force going upwards. All right. Now this looks very normal free body diagram, right? And we're going, well, why does why would normal force not be mg? <coughs> I mean, you can see that you, it looks like you assume it'd be mg, right? Let's actually write out our equation F equals ma. So. <coughs> I'm going to introduce y coordinates. What's the sum of forces in the y direction? Um, be the normal force, right? Uh huh. Minus mg. Minus mg. And what's that equal to? Zero. Well, it's actually equal to I mean, ma, right? Yeah, ma, but then mm -hmm. since it's not acceleration, well, we gotta we gotta be a little bit careful about that. We're saying acceleration <laughs> is not zero. Let's see why. Uh, this thing's moving in a circle, right? Mm -hmm. So it actually has to be accelerated. So is it accelerating? Oh. When it's going up, would its acceleration be decreasing a little bit? Well, so if it was here, and I'm moving in circular motion, these, the acceleration always will point towards the center of the circle. So if I'm moving in an, along a circle, the acceleration always points towards the center of the circle. Here it'll be pointing towards the center of the circle, too. So what should a y be? B squared over a y. First of all, it's towards the center of the circle. So is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Negative because what? it's in the negative y direction when it's up at the point oh. top here. You see that? Mm -hmm. And it's b squared over r. So. I have N minus MG is minus M D squared over R. <laughs> the condition for it to just fly off, just barely fly off, is when the normal force is equal to zero. So this would give me if I set the normal force to zero, this would get and solve for b. That would be the maximum possible speed to just stay on, or the or the speed where it just barely comes off. You know, it would probably be the same things. And so I would get the normal force is zero minus mg is equal to minus m d squared over r. So if I plug these on here, or multiply both sides by negative 1, I get this. Divide both sides by an m. And if I want to solve for, say, the maximum velocity, I could do these, I could multiply by r. <coughs> so rg is b squared, square root of r. There's B, and this would be the maximum speed at which it would just stay on the hill. Or the speed at which it just barely comes off. I mean, that's right at the, the limit between where it goes off and stays on. Mm -hmm. Any faster than this and it flies off. Okay. <laughs> so what would that, so, you know, we can do an example. <coughs> You guys can try this on, on your way out of here. So, what we have, um, let's say we have a, a, a train track. So, go north on Hall Street. <laughs> let's say that this height rise is about five, uh, is about two meters, okay? 
may not be quite that high, but we'll do it nice even numbers. And this width here, um, let's say, is about uh, so it's about uh, four meters. Really, it would really it's hard to do a single circle through here, but so we're interested in the smallest circle that you can draw where circular motion should occur. And that would be something like this. And you can see that, well, an estimate for this may be on the order of about two meters. So how fast can you go over those train tracks without flying off, without getting airborne? <coughs> so you want the normal force to be greater than zero? The normal force to be zero. That would be any faster than that, yeah. anywhere at fly off. <coughs> yeah, you get right you get right back to this equation, wouldn't you? So if I had plugged in two meters here, <coughs> I'd get take two root of nineteen point six. And what would that be? Four point four. What's that? Four point four. Four point four meters per second. And uh, so that'd be about, I don't know, 10 or a little bit more miles per hour. <coughs> like 2.2 .2 meters per second. From, or if I multiply this by 2, you get about miles per hour. So it says that this should go airborne at about 10 miles an hour. I mean, I'm sure I go over those tracks faster than that. <laughs> Suspension helps keep it down a bit. Okay. Mm. You know, because yeah, you're, because the spring will push it out. No. I mean, they're, they're, a little bit. they're never like two meters. Yeah, that's so probably, yeah, if I did it less, say I did one meter. Yeah, I'd probably actually probably get like, less, right? They're like 0.2, probably, like 270. So you're going airborne even, bit, even more. <laughs> So I'm assuming that the suspension kind of works in your favor, and mm -hmm. maybe maybe a better circle would be. Maybe you might want to come up with a question. <laughs> <laughs> That would change it a lot. So if, if there's some there's some subtlety to what would be a circle. The real problem I'd have to give you it. But you can see why you would fly off if you went too fast. It's not moving in circular motion and just moving flat. There's no acceleration. I'm going to do one more application, then I'll let you go, okay? Final application is uh, polar coasters. And this will also be similar to like fighter planes to a loop. Oops. say is one where it's more like a Hot Wheels car on the track or something where it's not like stuck to the track. <coughs> okay. I want to see how fast the car has to be going so it'll make it around that loop. So B question mark. And let's, uh, and let's say this loop has a radius R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram for this, the situation when it's up here. <coughs> what are the forces?
is on it. All right, which way does it go? Down. Okay, wait, gravity always goes down, good. What else? <coughs> normal force is down too, right? Yeah, normal force would be down. There's a normal force. Very good. Did everyone see why the normal force would be down in this case? Because <coughs> the, the track's above it, so yeah. the motor around will be pushing me down. So we also have the normal force going down like that. <coughs> and that's it, right? Now, if I'm, this thing's moving in circular motion, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce maybe Y going downwards just for... I, I guess I could be consistent for the upwards, but let's do it downwards. It's a little bit easier. So what are the forces in the Y direction? That'd be, yeah, MG all is in the Y direction, and then the normal force is in the same direction. And that has to equal M A Y, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> if I'm moving in a circular motion, what's this A Y? B squared over B squared over R. Yeah, and it points, you know, it's point, the acceleration has to be straight towards the center of the circle. With this choice of Y coordinate, it's that's positive. in the positive Y direction. Mm -hmm. So I do M B squared over R. Good. So the condition to barely stay on the track is that the normal force goes to zero just at that top point, okay? As long as the normal force is greater than zero, it's pressed, you know, it's still on the track firmly. When the normal force just barely goes to zero at that top point, that's just getting ready to fall off. So let's see if we can figure out what this D has to be when this normal force goes to <coughs> zero. Faster speeds will go around the track safely. Less fast speeds, it'll fall off. <coughs> so normal force equals zero. This is conditioned to just barely stay on the track or just barely fall off, whatever the... But any slower speed than this, than what we'll get from this, it'll fall off. So NB in that case would be M B squared over R. Those M's cancel. I get the same thing actually, do I? Mm -hmm. Bring this R, multiply both sides by R. Take square root. And that's my condition to make it safely around the track, is that B has to be bigger than this. Okay. That makes sense? Right. Now, let's say I wanted to find the normal force when it's going like fast, when it's going maybe twice that speed. <clears throat> so, <coughs> say B is 2 square root of BR. What is the normal force for on roller coaster? Saying, let's say it's equal to twice the speed of which it would just barely stay on. What would be the normal force at the top? So this is instead of finding minimum speeds, now we're looking to see what the force somebody would experience. So, uh, yes. are you just going to plug that in for V? Yes. And so, N is going to equal M. <coughs> So if I just plug that in for V, what would I get? 
n two square root of gr okay. squared. Yeah, so that'd be over four r. gr, right? Yeah. Over r. Those r is cancel. So I get four mg here. Mg here. I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So n is three. M G. Okay. Now, see how this is three times the gravity force? This is called a 3G turn. Okay? So sometimes you hear in like fighter pilots or you know pilots that they pulled, you know, nine G's. And they do a loop to loop or something like that. That's that's the normal force that they would experience would be 9 mg. Okay. Does that make sense? Now, that last little bit's a little fast, but I'll let you guys go. It's time to leave. We'll start with being for the test. Test is next. Monday. Monday. All right. Next Monday. <laughs> I'll start reviewing tomorrow. I have a